This is Station. Yep, Station. Station, for those of you who know. I built it 12 years ago, and the old ninja is having a little trouble keeping up with editing and After Effects. So it's time to be updated and reborn into something new. This means I get to take you to my favorite place in Taipei, and a store I wandered in and had an awesome experience that inspired me to learn more. All right, let's go. It's a dog. This is Cool PC, and the story of how one scrappy computer store became the largest parts retailer in the country. I had only been to Taipei's Electronic Heart once when I was a visitor to the island. I was quite floored by all the parts and gadgets you could buy. Even the theme of the area is glued together by one unifying concept: technology. It can be gross. Ready? Ready? Go. See, it can be gross. Income, income is exactly right. Technology is pretty important and prevalent in our lives. It's not just our phones and tablets, but the taken-for-granted systems that surround us in the modern world. Light enables us to see and create art. Towers allowing mass communication, simple transducers, nearly invisible but everywhere, complex systems making transportation efficient and affordable. No matter what, tech surrounds you at all times. I want to focus on what most people still consider the holy grail of technology: the computer. What? I'm a computer. Stop all the downloading. Sorry about that. I couldn't resist it. And that takes us to Cool PC. Though its Chinese name is a、uh, Best Price House. I can read house and price. I go with Cool PC because it's what the cool kids say. Anyways. The store deals in everything computer, parts, custom builds, anything and everything to create and upgrade your PC. Right now, you're in the Bade 2 store, and it's the store I wandered into and had that spark of inspiration. I was treated with great customer service initially, but what interested me was the unique feel of the store and a logistics system I'd never seen. We'll learn all about it. Now that you have an idea of what the cool PC stores are like. It's cool to note this location is their second oldest shop. This store is also the second most Taiwanese place you'll ever visit, other than the island itself. I came to this conclusion from the gigantic old Tatung AC unit, the acceptance of giant roaches, and taping cardboard on the floor when it rains. My God, I love the idiosyncrasies of this place. Just like I love to build PCs. Wow, what a great transition! Now, before we begin, I can feel you judging me. It's palpable, but you should know I don't run air filters ever. I do maintenance once a year because I don't really care about a pristine PC. And my PC lives on the floor with my son, who's a good douche. Yeah, get all that fur and dander sucked right in. Ah, I love him. And actually, I had planned on rebuilding a PC two years ago now, so I just stopped maintenance. But everybody loves a redemption story, so let's get it on. I suppose I could have cleaned at least once, but then you wouldn't be looking down on me right now, in disgust, typing an angry comment. The lowest of the low in PC master race. But that low, that underdog, is the spirit I want to capture. Let's talk about nerds. Eh, except for me, I'm not a nerd. I have polyhedral dice and magic cards. Yeah. Sparing you the entire history of the nerd, let's get down to brass tacks. Nerds are almost always stereotypically portrayed as techie type people, smart and weird at the same time. Heck, pick any of the John Hughes films, and you'll see this stereotype in action. It's hard to put a timestamp on the cinema that owns this portrayal, but it's still alive and well in today's films. But nerds are more than just tech people. They usually possess an obsession about something, diving deep into a topic and gaining insight that others choose to ignore. Then, when faced with an obstacle, nerds will use their unique talents to overcome it. 
foregoing the traditional stand and fight methods. A perfect example is the film Moneyball. I mean, yeah, Sam Jackson plays the analytics guy, the stereotype, but the tech is largely absent. It's the natural obsession with the game and numbers, then using that knowledge to stand against the system and ultimately win. Nerds to the core. The second, perhaps more ubiquitous nature of nerds is that they're never expected to win. They are the underdogs. While this can be applied to any character that faces a challenge, it fits nerds more because of the apparent size of the opposition. Nerds versus jocks, kids versus hardened criminals, geeks versus aliens, and the entire army. They are the unwashed and the unexpected. Cool PC was once the same underdog, just a shop in the ocean of many others. To understand their rise, we need to go back in time and location where it all began. Istanbul was Constantinople, now it's Istanbul, not Constantinople, been a long time gone. Oh, Constantinople, still it's Turkish delight on a moonlit night. Every gal in Constantinople lives in Istanbul. 1993, at the intersection of Xingsheng and Ba De Road. It's quite different now, but at one time there was a bridge here. Just like this. There you go. Both historically and photographically correct. All right, all right, all right. I'll at least try. There, that's a better idea. Kinda. Actually, the bridge is preserved on the side of the Nerd Mall. Well, again, kinda. Seems that Taiwan is just as good as America at preserving its history. As far as I could find, this is the only historical repository of the area, and it's starting to peel and show its age. These glass panels tell the story of the area at that time, as you could get books, records, musical instruments, it's not all that techy, which kind of supports arguments I heard when talking with people. Some say that the tech industry was always located in this area. Others say it was moved here. Nobody can agree or give me solid dates either. So I figure it like this. There's a Godzilla in the area. Go to Godzilla and head this way, and maybe, just maybe, you'll find the old tech industry area of Taipei. Maybe. Either way, the tech industry is here now, and at least at the time of these photos. Because under this bridge was the very first and very small location of Cool PC. It's where the old gods originated. The old gods are the people who have been there since the beginning. Sadly, there are no photos or videos left of this original location. So this little photo memorial and plaque of the bridge is all that remains. But I offer you an alternative. We can still visit a shop that is nearly identical in form and function of that first shop. You can haunt any house by yourself. Be a man or a mouse by yourself. You can act like a king on a throne. This is the Gonghua Digital Plaza store, and it's nearly an exact replica of the very first Cool PC store. This store is just as captivating as it is tiny. Its entire operating space is just 13 by 13 feet. However, that's not entirely accurate, as you end up with a functional space of 7 feet across by about 9 feet deep due to inventory and operational needs. Totally not confusing graphic at all either. Good job, me. And trust me, the priority of space is given to the customers, as there's less than two feet from counter to inventory. Now that's some tight work in space. Having this much inventory in such a small space creates a unique working culture and system that I've only observed in this location. I mean, there's an absolute crazy amount of stuff crammed in this little space. From floor to ceiling, every inch is stuffed. And to get things, oh, the team goes up. Now, OSHA probably disagree here, but the times I witnessed the team go up to get something or to stock something was, uh, it was a lot. Suffice to say, there are professionals at working the stool, and they also stick the landings, too. And well, I don't call them the team for nothing. Being in such a tight-knit space all day forces you to be close. Help each other out, among other aspects of being part of a small team, like here. Chen Shenshan, Mr. Chen, the only one of them who doesn't like spicy food. And well, the group has a lot of fun with that fact. I've been in that position before. Hang in there, my dude. Except I like spicy food, so, you know, 
I'm on their side. This small space and tight-knit team creates a super groovy vibe here. As I was filming, I talked with the team, got in on the jokes, and they just accepted me as part of them. I can tell that from the space, the unique systems in place, and the passion of the team, that the old gods had long ago planted roots for a unique store experience. And it turns out my hunch was true, as when I'd speak with the old gods, they'd often reminisce about working in such a tight space, and the good old days when the old gods were... gods? I feel fortunate for the opportunity to experience that vibe for myself. So now that you understand what the original location was like, you should learn about the surrounding area and its culture. See, uh, hold on a tick here. Is that a blown capacitor? It is! Ooh, happy day! Oh, I'm stimming. That's because I get to take you to Gongquan. Uh, but there's something you should learn before we go, because retail space is different here than it is, say, in like Anglo-European cultures retail space. That I've experienced. Come on. Yeah, so just getting off the train in Zhongshao Xingshen, the station is plastered with computers and tech stuff, all alluding to what the area is about. Hop on the escalator here. Yeah, I'm so excited. It's really cool to come here. I think you'll love it. Yeah, uh, we're getting there. This is called a cutaway. Spielbergian editing to heighten the drama. All right, okay, okay, I'll stop. It's always my favorite part to exit the subway and experience a fresh and exciting place. Here we go. Welcome to Gonghua Digital. Uh, that's it. The back wall of a school and just the road and some buildings. Yeah. This station has seven exits, and all of them suck, cinematically speaking. Functionally, they're fine. Yeah, how do I save this segment? Oh, I know. Let's go to Japan. Welcome to Akihabara, baby. Your one-stop shop for all things tech and nerd at the same time. I brought you here because this is where I first encountered and learned that Japan, and also Taiwan, likes to compartmentalize shopping. I can't speak for other countries on this hemisphere of the globe, but we are batting two for two here, so there is an emergence of pattern. Need a laptop? Akihabara has it. PC? Akihabara. Camera? Akihabara. Headphones with gorals? Akihabara. Now, of course, online and in general, you can still buy anything anywhere. But if you're looking for variety and competition in prices, one needs to come to the dedicated area. Grouping the genres of stores in an area is pretty good too. Drives competition and gives locals and tourists a reason to go to that area to keep the machine running. Now let's contrast and head on over to America. Well, let me tell you something, brother. Land of the car. And you'll see how shopping is designed for that. Our shopping areas are massive and sprawled out across the land. And we take a shotgun approach to genre. Instead of one shop for one type of thing, it's one stop has everything. Like this one plaza, you can pick yourself up some clothes, Junior's birthday stuff, food for the doge, movies and games, and end your trip by picking up your new graphics card. It's interesting to note that the UK and other Anglo-European countries take this same approach to shopping. I saw this every day when I lived in UK. Even though they have far less space than America, the shopping plazas are the same. The apples don't really fall far from the tree, eh? Now this approach of everything is everywhere, it's fine. It's normal for me because I'm American, but in reality, it sucks. This style leads to copy-paste shopping everywhere. The Best Buy in the plaza on Main Street doesn't have your GPU? Well, hop on over to the new plaza on Squidward Drive. It's the same stores, in practically the same layout, and maybe they might have a Dick's Sporting Goods. Wow, innovation. Just compare them side to side, and tell me which one looks like it'd be more fun and inspires you to visit. Now let's head back to Taiwan and see the opposite. Hop on the green line to the Bayman Photographic District, where they sell, eh, surprise, camera stuff. New or used, anything and everything with photography is on this street. I love this place. If that's not your cup of tea, quick hop on the orange line and stop at Zhongshao Xingshen, and you're back in the Gonghua area, where during the day it usually has some sort of techie promotional event, and at night it's just as awesome as Akihabara. There is another side of this area I want you to experience. 
Yeah, that didn't work. I had to go back and glob the solder on there to get the posts out. To replace this capacitor, we need to go to the underground market. Nah, I don't mean criminals and black markets. I mean, we're literally going underground. This is like you died and went to nerd heaven. There's such an eclectic mix of electronic parts. Old tech, for sale and in storage. Ooh. Best part for me is the stores that deal in electronic pieces. Inside, they're spread out like an ocean of parts. And they sell everything you can think of or need for either repairing or building an electronic device. Switches, capacitors, breadboards, wire. And this is just one shop down here. There's like six of them in this dungeon. And that, folks, is the entire Gonghua area. Virtually every inch is dedicated to the electronics industry. Got what we need. Let's put it in. Check polarity. And let it flow. Now we'll test it later. Now you're all smart folks. Probably asking that if everything is crammed together, how do businesses stand out and survive? And you're right. The competition in the area is absolutely fierce. In fact, I walked around and took an inventory of the shops that sell PC parts and systems. Yeah, I'm weird. The rules are the store must sell parts, beyond just mice, like at least internal hard drives. And since I can't stand in the middle of the street to make the shot work, here's a split screen. Just on Bade Road, there are 18 stores that'll sell you PC parts, plus another six on the side streets. We're up to 24 open air shops, plus there's four in the underground, five in Sintrent, and another 15 inside the Nerd Mall, making the count 48 stores that'll sell you computer parts. That's a lot of damage. So how does one stand out? Well, to start, participate in the long tradition of handing things out. Yeah, Cool PC also did this. In fact, it's the only surviving piece of history that I got. Wow. Look at this, 2010. And it's Intel's second gen, right before I built Station. It's the entire menu of what the shop offered at the time. Oh my god, DDR2? It's so cool to have this history to physically interact with it. It's like looking at your old yearbook. Or your pictures when you was a little baby. And just imagine getting like 30 of these things as you walk down the street. But there has to be a better way. Something faster, cleaner, revolutionary if you will. Nah, you just want to see the dirty PC get cleaned. All right, let's do it. Heh, <laughs> footage looks like crap. Must be a GoPro. Hard to believe it's only been two years since I last cleaned. Don't do drugs, kids. Okay, so maybe it was a little dirty. But hey, Greg Selzar made a whole channel out of cleaning PCs. Every inch gonna get scrubbed up real nice. Get those fans scrubbed out. Maybe you didn't know this, but certain fans, you can oil the bearings and get them ready for another 10 years of service. Reseat the glue as best I can. Jump pins four and five. Power them up and let that oil work its way in. What a difference a day made. 24 wow. She cleans up real nice. So smooth. Speaking of smooth, another amazing transition. The old gods wanted a smoother way to get their menu out to their customer base. And the way they tackled this problem created what I call the catalyst. In my research, I feel that this is the step that exploded and took the small retailer from under the bridge to the largest in the country. For this, we need to travel to 2005. You'll see that to this day, the other competition still employs the handouts. Ish. It's evolved into a menu in front of the shop advertising what goodies lie within. And you see these all over the street uh, and on some storefronts too. But you'll notice that the cool PC stores are clean. There's nothing other than the store itself. And that's because of this little beauty right here. The difference is you.
the screen. I can even say the one screen to rule them all, because that's exactly what it did. So why is it revolutionary? It does way more than just take the paper menu and put it online. That's just a website, and it already existed. They made it completely interactive and live. Let's play with it a bit, shall we? So the first thing to note when you get here is the inventory is updated live. These things that are Red Bull are out of stock at the moment. And since their name is literally Best Price House, that's what they offer. To pull this off, the entire team is constantly scouring the internet to offer the best pricing versus everyone else. The inventory team is constantly ticking things up and down as stuff goes out and comes in. That's not all. Yeah, you got your basic shopping needs like pictures, zoom-ins, and what's on sale. But there's also this section with testing data too. You're able to compare this GPU to that GPU and on all the current benchmarks and games, helping inform you when picking out your graphics card. Links to the manufacturer's website, any information you'd want to know before buying a product has been collected and is at your fingertips. You also notice that it looks like an order form. That's because it is. You just go through, punch in your parts, tally it up and press order. Or email it, print it out, phone it in. The convenience is unmatched. Something you could never achieve with just a paper. I label this as the catalyst because in 2005, they were the first and only ones to do this. And it worked. It worked very well. So well that even today, the competition still does not have a system as fluid as this. And the old gods knew that they had gold because the stores are structured around the screen. Any cool PC store you wander into has what I call the station. Station. It's always the same. A stool, a big pad, a keyboard, mouse, and a screen. Ready and waiting for you, the customer, to come in, sit down, and play either on your own or with the guidance of a team member. What an absolute home run. Just as all hail Femputer, all shall hail the screen. And that's how I ended up getting my parts. Though I did my own research in English, and when I was ready I wandered into the store and told them what I want. But I might be a little bit of a nerd. Just a little. Quasi-nerd. Ooh, Jesus. That's a lot of pressure. No wonder people are saying the 13th chips are bending. We're going aftermarket, baby. Ah, this is always the most satisfying part of any new thing. With all that they're boasting, I figured I'd give the new kid a shot. Don't let me down. Now you'd think that's it, cool PC story done. They conquered all, but no, culture and nerds are always evolving. I wanted to experience modern nerd culture and see how it's evolved from just being the techie demographic. So I went to, uh, I'll just shut up for a minute 30 and let the visuals talk.
This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? <laughs> I remember. Couldn't get through a Saturday without seeing that 8,000 times. But yeah, except it's not drugs. It's your first cosplay. What an absolute mind bender that was. Accurate representation of my brain during the event. There's no denying it. Nerd culture and all the things that go with it are mainstream these days. Cosplay, animation, tabletop, gaming, all have vibrant communities. And the one thing communities need to grow is support. Is this a transition? Yeah. Oh, you're getting good at this. No, thank you. We're heading to 2010 for this one. Wait, wait, hold the phone here. I don't think that one's enthusiasm. I mean, strike me if I'm wrong, but I think it looks more like this. You're the best around. Nothing gonna <clears throat> Sidetracked. Sorry. Now, this didn't exactly happen in 2010. I don't know when they rolled out their shirts, but it's thematically related. Because, well, it's not just a shirt. It's a jersey. I mean, show me an esports team that doesn't have one, because team. But Cool PC wanted to go beyond just looking the part. The old gods at Cool PC decided that they needed more than just wearing a jersey to look the part of gamer. So, they put their money where their mouth is. In 2010, they began to sponsor local gaming events, which continues to this day, and they aren't picky about it either. Small or big, Cool PC will attend, host, and even supply the gear for many gaming events. Like the one you're watching now. They had their hands all over this. Simply allowing the event to take place is beneficial for both the player community and the businesses around them. Players can give their insights to better the products and enrich everyone from pro to hobbyist. And in turn, the manufacturers can make these adjustments and drive better business. Sponsors making events happen gives the opportunity for players to progress from normies to pro level. I feel this is the next most important event in the Cool PC timeline of growth. It comes after the catalyst and has less of an immediate impact, but over time this has proven to be big. And I see the logic in the old gods thinking. Build up the community around you, and in turn, you will build yourself up in the process. So next time you see these shirts in the wild, it's cool to know that the jersey is earned. It's more than just a show of solidarity, brother, but it's action. And as Graham Graham always says, actions speak louder than words. I want to talk to you about risk and innovation. So we're going to take a look at two points in time. Hey, if Doc Brown can time travel in a DeLorean and a train, I can do this. I need to take you to a place filled with risk takers and we'll meet my personal favorite innovators. I think you'll like it. Check it, check it. This is Computex. It's a once a year, third biggest tech convention in the world, right here in Taipei. It's a time for companies, both big and small, to come together and show off and sell their existing or upcoming tech to vendors in the world. The space is kind of dominated by the PC parts industry, but it's certainly not limited to it. As you'll find everything from gigantic server racks to food tech and industrial applications and way too many more to cover. Think of it like this. Basically everything you interact with in the modern world is traded here on massive scales. They even have switches. Ooh, let's press this one. Boom. <laughs> Tee -hee. How could I not make that joke? He loves the nuclear. 
It's a trade show at heart, but it's a nerd's wet dream too, as they have the overclocking world championships, awesome custom PCs, the gorls, and the swag. Holy Jesus. This year we get fake gold and silver plated ram sticks with diamond LED tops. This is real, folks. So that's Computex, filled with innovators and risk takers of all kinds. I want you to meet one as I feel they are the most relevant to the story. This is Noctua, and there isn't a greater song in the universe to describe these guys. I love them and pick them because they are absolutely obsessive when it comes to details. For instance, their new fan design, they invented a new type of plastic to deal with the warpage that occurs from the fan mounting to the cooling tower. That sounds par for the course, but the story is, even with the old plastic, everything was within a normal spec, and it could technically be released to the public. Their models showed that with centrifugal force applied over an extended time, the old plastic would fall out of spec. While these test results would likely satisfy other manufacturers, the performance did not meet Noctua's expectations. They understand that people tend to use their products for an absurd amount of time. And this is true. I bought a new cooler and I stuck my 11-year-old fans on it. And they're just as good and quiet as day one. And I couldn't even oil them. The bearing is sealed. So Noctua designs their products to a ridiculously high standard. And to meet these standards, innovation is a must, such as designing a new polymer. They're also risk takers. They haven't released a new cooler and fan design in about nine years now, and it's because of this passion for details and innovation. They also don't follow trends, which is risky as trends are a quick way for a business to make money. While the industry continues to push LED and other flashy add-ons that do nothing other than aesthetics, Noctua continues with its performance first mindset. This is where Cool PC comes into the picture. See, on Bade Road, there's another face to the street you haven't seen yet, and that is the side of empty shops. While many have quit the business, there are others that change from brick and mortar to online only, rendering them a warehouse and shipping company. This isn't a bad strategy, it's very cost effective from the business standpoint. But Cool PC chooses to take the opposite path here. They've been expanding their physical footprint aggressively since 2008. Let's take a look on a map here. I might need a new map soon. This girl's been through a few films. Each heart on this map represents a physical store you can go to. And I found this is where the customer and the business agree on something. See, the old gods believe that having a physical space for the customer to interact with the products and the team is core to the PC building and buying experience. And I agree. Online research will always be part of the equation, but decisions are made by my experiences. How do I like the feel of the mouse? What switches do I like? What's it feel like to build in that case? And this risk is paying off. People like going to the stores for demoing products and conducting their own research. This expansion risk has paid off enough that, in 2019, Cool PC formed its own logistics team to support their satellite locations. Oh, look! Little baby trucks! So cute! Oh. I'm gonna bet this risk will pay off too. Controlling your own shipping lanes and schedules has to be a win. I mean, Walmart does it, and, well, last time I checked, they're doing alright. Just like John Wick and cable management. Now that's a transition! <laughs> I know. I want to share something I noticed while making this documentary. I'm not sure if the old gods planned this, but I wouldn't put it past them. I mean, they are the old gods after all. Even though I'm curating the shots here, I find that it's near impossible to not know who Cool PC is. In Gonghua, on the streets and in the shops, the team is just everywhere you can't miss them. But as I think about it, that's the other genius of the jersey. And now, I'm kind of sure the old gods knew this. 
Let's take Noctua again. They buck the trend of LEDs and flashy colors. Many would say that's a detriment, but it works in their favor, as just one peek and any PC enthusiast knows who made that fan and what level of quality it is. There is a ton of shops in the Gonghua area, and most of the Laobans dress like normal people. They blend in. You don't know when you meet one on the street. Recognition is what you can get from taking risks and noticing details. Let's talk about knowing your character. A big thing I noticed at the cosplay was how personal the costumes can be. I'm sure many of them are based on popular shows, but even those are assembled from small pieces. A collection of details and choices by its creator, giving each one a sense of individuality. This comes from the creator knowing the character inside and out. What works and what doesn't. Oh yeah, and dem eyes. They're just everywhere. I bought this case for NT50, and that's like a buck and a half US. It's absolutely gross, and I think it was a smoker PC. And you guys judged me. Look at this. But I knew I could clean it and give Station a new home. However though, not everyone is like me. Some people don't know how to build PCs. Others do, but they don't want to. The old gods knew this because they knew people. And rather than be a gatekeeper, they created a solution to bring the joy of creating a custom PC to everyone. Welcome to the build floor. You've been seeing these bags all through this film now, and it's time to put a reason to the madness. They're the build bag. Just put your parts in and they build themselves. Yeah, come on, build. Build. Maybe we need some puppy power here. All right, dog, build it. Uh, we can put these in. I guess not. They are but the beginning of a larger process. You have the option of picking your parts online by yourself or with the guidance of the team in store. And guidance is important. No matter what build skill you have, it's always good to bounce ideas off people. The team will help you meet your goals in designing and understanding your PC, or your character if you will. The parts are then bagged, tagged, and brought here. Nerd HQ. But can we soak this in for a second? You're looking at vanilla Nax Ramus here, and it has two old gods this time. Wow. The build for is nuts. It's just constant PC building everywhere you look. Hey Loki, I'd work here. I mean building systems all day? Hell yeah. Ahem, ahem, ahem. That means offer me a job. You know, in case I was too subtle. The chaos is fairly organized with the inventory of orders in the blue crates, stacked around, and then they go to a builder station, which there are a lot of. Once the build is complete, the walls have the part of the team for operating system install, updates, and whatnot. Then this middle island here is for testing, stability, and overclocking. Then finally the counter, where the customer gets to meet their team member who built their system, and they go over every detail before packing it and shipping it out the door. This is an awesome experience, even for me, who loves to build PCs. I feel that the weight of this decision by the old gods is pretty enormous because after the expansion, Cool PC has influence, and allowing people to engage with PCs in a friendly manner will help those who want to start learning to build on their own take that first step. And this isn't a new idea either. The old gods shared with me that even when they were in the mortal realm under the bridge, they always offered to build the customer's PC. No charge. Yeah, all of this for nothing. Just pick and buy the parts there and the team will get it up and running. 
In fact, that exact thing is what cemented the deal for me to make this film. See, I told you I wandered in there and bought my parts. But I bought 13th gen Intel, and my motherboard was only updated for 12th gen. Now, it's just a simple BIOS update, and you're good to go. I mean, I can do that, no problem. But my team member asked me if I wanted them to update the BIOS for me. And I was like, nah, 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 I got this. He's like, you sure? We'll do it for free. Just go down the street to the Burger King, turn right, and into the big green building called Nax. So I did. And when I saw the build floor, talk shop with this guy, who is the one who did my BIOS update, I knew that this place was worth my time. And I couldn't be happier. This next action is most likely not how CoolPC sees it, or how they thought it would be interpreted. However, this is how I see it. This step is actually helping against e-waste, and that is sexy. Kind of like keeping your toys in a box in the basement sexy. Oh boy, I better explain that one. Ooh, references. We need to travel to the factory, which they set up in 2017. I know that the original action of the old gods was to bring sales and the joy of PCs to everyone at every budget. See, not everyone needs a custom PC, so this is when CoolPC started to offer their own line of pre-built systems. Vanilla, cookie cutter, no need for custom part picking, it's all done for you. Just walk in, pay, and walk out with a system. And the factory, you'll notice, looks exactly like the build floor. Because, well, it is like it. They just build the company's pre-built line. So you might be asking yourself, how is CoolPC, a mass maker of PCs, saving on e-waste? Okay. See, Station has a lot of life left in it. So why throw it away? He's getting cleaned up, rebuilt, and repurposed. Saving him from the landfill and polluting the world. Then, you remember the shirt? And all the badges? CoolPC has formed partnerships with everyone on that shirt, meaning they'll use those components in their pre-built systems, and those manufacturers adhere to a standardized system. And that is the key. Let's take a trip to Cyberpunk City and I'll show you. You got your motherboard standards. This is ATX, and it's the most common of all sizes in motherboards. Measures 9.6 by 12 inches tall. Everyone adheres to this specification. And there are other specs like Micro ATX, Mini ITX, Nano ITX, and Pico ITX, but you're getting into phone territory there. The point is, is everybody makes things according to this standard. And then you have the screw holes for mounting. On ATX, you have three rows of three, all spaced according to the standard. This means that you can mount any ATX motherboard in any case that is ATX standard. Now let's look at this abomination from Dell and their Alienware line of PCs. If we take the two motherboards and place them side by side, you can see... Eh, yeah. I'm mounting it in a case? Ah, I forgot to say before that nearly all ATX standard cases will supply the mounting from ATX all the way down to Mini ITX. And then this thing comes along and I can't get it going there. It won't fit. Shit! That's because this motherboard only fits in the case it came with. From its shape to the mounting holes, it's all proprietary design. So who buys this? Well, they're designed for the unknowing or when Gram Gram wanders into Best Buy and wants to get little Timmy a game computer. No computer. God, I love these still. I don't know much about computers other than... All right, well, so what? The answer is nothing. Not even the case can be reused. Oh, okay. You can pull the CPU and the hard drives and the memory sucks but the rest is total waste. I know that I like, and perhaps many others in the community, love when Steve at Gamers Nexus tears down these proprietary PCs. Because they voice the truth and what a lot of us feel. So much of it is just wasteful and ends up as trash. By CoolPC having their factory design and make pre-built systems that use standardized parts, the person who buys the pre-built has a way into the PC hobby. They can change the parts out and they'll all work together. Or if a component goes bad, they don't need to buy a whole new system from the ground up. The amount of e-waste goes down tremendously just by using parts that adhere to a standard. 
I'm sure this isn't what the old gods intended, but this is how I see Cool PC's factory, a positive in the world. There is a final segment I want to visit that I felt made Cool PC the success it is today. And for this, we need to go back to 2003, when the old gods launched the forums, which today are sadly closed down thanks to internet. Can't have nice things. But what did they do to get shut down? Cool PC form management regulations. One, provocative, insulting shouting contrary to the good customs of society and other off-topic irrelevant articles cut. The same goes for sofas. I mean, sofas? Sofas. I always knew there was something wrong with you. You son of a bitch. This move predates the catalyst, but once again it shows that the old gods are generous and understood the value of friendship and community. On the forums, everyone was invited to discuss parts, builds, ideas, benchmarks. Your dream system and just general nerd culture was welcome. It was a place you could ask questions to get into the hobby or deepen your existing knowledge. It was also a way to connect with CoolPC directly for support. This resonated with me personally because, well, I didn't always know how to build a PC and I was scared. There's two major people that played a role in developing my love for PC building. This is Biostar and they made my first ever motherboard. I found them at Computex and was absolutely elated to see that they're still around. Like an old friend. And another person who's still around is... Mike is Boris. Not his real name. The handle. We don't dox people here. See, Mike is Boris guided my every decision in building my first PC. And I could just watch in amazement. Uh, let's go to Zangar Marsh for this one. Mike is Boris and I built the PC back in the good old days, before CPUs had IHSs. Uh, that gray heatsink on top nowadays. Back then, we just had raw silicone, baby. I don't know if I should put those words together. Well, literally, it was back when Gram Gram was building PCs. Hey, you know, low-key, I think Gram Gram might be an old god herself. Anyways, this was really scary because Gram Gram had to slap that cooler on the silicone using the might of Zeus. And if you did it wrong, you'd crack the die. And well, there goes your CPU and the money. Gram Gram, old god. I only know and got to experience this because Mike is Boris built before and took the time out of his life to assemble my PC and talked me through each step. I cannot thank him enough to this day for planting and cultivating the seed of PC building. He's a true friend. My processor was an AMD Anthon XP, though I can't remember which version. I used the computer for five years before it died, then I had an e-machine for a while and knew I wasn't getting what I needed for my money. And then, sadly, I further devolved and had a MacBook Pro. God, I regret that. So when the time came again to build, I hit the forms like the now defunct Tech Syndicate and the start of Linus Tech Tips. I knew I could do it. I just needed that push and confidence to make a new machine on my own. And that is where the second person comes into play, Newegg TV, and Paul of who will become Paul's hardware. Paul made a video series on how to choose parts, assemble them from start to finish, and this would be all that I needed. God, watching this makes me tingly. It was this video series along with the forms that guided me to create Station, and it ended up serving me for over 10 years. I also met Paul at Computex, and sometimes that old saying of never meet your heroes, it's not always true. He's a great human, and I'm proud to have met him and thanked him for his early tutelage. This is how a community can work, and the passion of others spreads and ignites passion amongst all. I think the old gods knew this when they set the forms up, that fostering and building the community would not only grow the business, but the people around it. Yeah, and kids, learn the lesson of bench testing your parts before building them. Station won't start. Are you shitting me? I gotta take all that out of there? Yep. In the end, it was a faulty CPU 8-pin cable. So I decided to test everything else and found a dead SATA cable too. Put it back together and hooray! Windows 7. Need a new background. There we go. Yeah. Tech 
has always been and will always be in our lives, and it's only ever increasing. What I found on this journey is a group of passionate people from normies to obsessive engineers. A company that through all the documentation they gave me, I noticed an unspoken pattern of thought and behavior. Every action and risk the old gods made has always been about the people. Not the tech, not the business, but the community. And in my experience, Cool PC, the tech community, and the cosplay community, everyone was warm and welcome to an outside observer and a person willing to learn. People are my favorite subjects. And to capture a genuine smile is a wonderful experience. There's something the world needs more of these days. And imagine, you are, or you give the thing that makes people smile your growth would be unlimited. And you could start from anywhere. Yeah.